Our reading for this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who are being saved. This ends the reading for this morning. You know, it is interesting for us to be talking about the church coming together in the book of Acts as we are trying, still trying to figure out how to be the church in the midst of staying away from each other and worshiping in new and unique ways. The book of Acts is a continuation of the book of Luke. Now, sometimes these books together are called Luke-Acts, as the author of each is believed to be the same person. The book of Luke finishes, and then Acts continues to share in the expansion of the church and the sharing of the message of God and of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, the book of Acts includes many different stories of an expanding church. Today, we are all determining what it means to be church today. I have been finding that it is both challenging and exciting as we embark on this new way of church. Last week, I held a healing service at 1030 since it was the last Sunday of the month. And today I will be including a communion liturgy after this sermon so that we may commune together as we normally do on the first Sunday of the month. Now, even though we are not together, we can celebrate the Holy Meal as the body of Christ, each person in our own time. Now, although church has been different, lady, I want to celebrate some things that we have been doing as we had a consistory meeting on Monday night to continue to keep the church running. We'll, we will be holding our first Sunday school class at 930 on Sunday morning uh, to make sure that the Sunday school program and our young people will, will stay connected. This afternoon, I will be meeting with our confirmation young ladies to keep them moving forward through the program and checking in on them and keeping them moving forward. We also have our weekly prayer meetings. We do have people continually giving to the church financially, and for that I say thank you. And I've been so pleased to celebrate the work that we are continuing to do both for our own church community as well as the greater community that we serve. And I say I want to celebrate these things because this is what the first churches were doing and what was happening in Acts. They were trying to be the church in new and different ways, and in some ways, that is almost like what we're doing right now. Our passage from Acts comes fairly close after a time of Pentecost when the disciples receive the Holy Spirit and are sent out to preach the gospel to all the world. And this passage from Acts tells us that many signs and wonders were being done by these apostles. Now, we may not think of our churches today or our pastors creating these experiences of awe, but we are continuously having these moments in our lives that are beautiful and wonderful. We can take this time of being church differently and spend it thinking about some changes in the way that we live both individually as well as communally. You know, we sometimes, we, we fill our calendars with things to do, both for the church as well as things for ourselves. But when we are creating these opportunities for worship or for ministry outside of our church, we need to be asking a question. 
Are we looking for ways to find awe in our lives? Or are we just looking for things to fill up our time? Now, the early church was not creating things just to do, but were doing their best to find things that would be meaningful. We have to ask the question for ourselves when we are trying to make these opportunities to, to be the church and find what is feeding us. And is this ministry that we are doing, is it feeding us or is it draining us? These early Christians were fed by the things that they did and the way that they lived. Have you taken some time away from church or work or school uh, and, and used it as a time to experience some downtime, to stop even, take stock and begin afresh during this time when we're all supposed to be staying at home? Now, you may not be able to do this if you have multiple working adults either at home uh, or maybe even someone having to leave to go work out in the community. You may also have multiple children working at the same time, doing their schoolwork. But if, if you really sit down and think about it, have you had even just a little bit more time than you did before? Maybe you're not traveling that 45 minutes or that half hour to work every day. Maybe seeing the kids and being with the family at home is allowing you some more opportunity just, just to be together eating your meals together and, and sharing in that family time. So since Bree and I have been working from home, we, we, and traveling out very minimally, we, we've used less fossil fuels. And like I mentioned before, uh, some of us have less travel time. So have you noticed any changes that have been for the better? Or maybe you have even noticed a time of awe or wonder because of this. If you take a look around the world or even around our country, you may see that the air over New York City and over California is cleaner. The waters in Italy are clearer and you can see fish for the first time in a very long time in the canals. The animals of the wild are traveling into cities and probably making their way through areas that were once home to their ancestors when they were wooded areas before we all came in and built the buildings and built it up. I've heard it said that it is almost as if the earth right now is taking time to clean and heal itself as much as we are taking time to heal and stay safe. Do you feel good about the world being more at rest? Every time I see a live stream of the uh, Times Square in Manhattan, it, it moves me to a place where the hustle and bustle of entertainment is now, at, at, at least for now, is, is at rest. For the city that never sleeps, uh, thanks to Frank Sinatra, it sure looks quite calm at the moment. And there is a sense of awe in those moments when the world is more at rest. Now, this is not always a good thing because there are millions of people who are unable to go to work and collect a paycheck, and there are other problems that are secondary to this pandemic. But there is still good being seen in the world. As we sometimes dwell on the pain and suffering, it is good for us to take some time and see the awe and wonder and the good that is also happening. The apostles in Acts are selling their possessions and assisting other people. They are the epitome of generosity and the sharing of the love of Christ. We were able to uh, 
box up another 125 packages to give away at the uh, April food pantry distribution in our in the Schuylkill Valley School District, working with a number of other uh, pastors and churches. And I was able to help package up the items the day before the clients came to pick up the items, but it was still good to see the generosity of our local churches, the businesses, and the organizations continuing to work together to make sure that people are fed. Like the apostles, we are sharing in our gifts and our possessions to the greater community of those in need. But it can be difficult for us though too. You know, when we're reading this passage and we're, we're living in the 21st century and in a time when having more and bigger usually means more important according to our society standards. It is during times like this when we are sitting in our homes with our families and we are hopefully being reminded of, of those important things in life. The times that we get to spend together is helping us to learn what we can be grateful for. So what can we learn from our passage this morning about how we can be grateful and how we can have glad and generous hearts. The apostles here broke bread together and ate at home being grateful for what they had. And there are times when it can be hard to think about how we are blessed right now. It is, it, it is easy for us, it, it is not easy for us to always have glad and generous hearts, but you know, the apostles were going through stuff at the time too. Their leader was gone. One of the original 12 turned out to be a traitor. One of those still sitting there denied knowing Jesus three times. The book of Acts isn't necessarily about those original 12, but it is good for us to know that it was not easy to be first, the first followers of Christ. And it is not easy for the church to be established or establishing during this time or really any time. Now, the way that many churches grow is when that, some, that someone who happens to be church shopping at the time happens to wander into our sanctuary on a particular Sunday morning. Now, we can't have visitors per se during our worship service right now to share how we are a loving and welcoming congregation. But we, we can still be working to make our church and our world a better place. We can still show how we are connected and a caring congregation as we share in the love of Christ through the continued work and worship of God. Now, if you decide to take communion with your family as I present a liturgy for communion again this morning, I'm going to be giving you a moment to think about three people from our church family and pray for them. Since we mostly sit in the same pews. I even encourage you to pause the video at that point and talk to your family and talk to those who are communing with you and, and picture your church seat, if you will, and picture those people that sit around you. Think about them for a moment. Pray for their health and their safety to keep us even more connected. The apostles were spreading themselves all around the countryside to teach the message. Paul was even writing letters from inside jail. Now we are not trapped in our homes with bars on our doors and windows and absolutely no way out, but we, we can stay connected to the outside world during this time as well. In these short verses from Acts, we find out a whole lot about these apostles and we can emulate them just in little ways so that we can find the awe and wonder of ministry even in these times. 
May you find the spirit of God continuing to share the wonder and compassion in your lives. May you continue to stay connected to your church family and the world around you. May you always find joy in your life and the blessings that you have as you seek glad and generous hearts. May you find the love of God to be with you and remain with you always. Amen. As we begin our communion worship with our families by our side, we should always be coming to the table with clean and open hearts. So let us be in a spirit of confessional prayer so that we might recognize the grace in the meal that is before us. Let us confess our sins together. Let us pray. Merciful God, we know that you love us and that you call us to fullness of life. But around us and within us, we see the brokenness of the world and of our ways. Our successes leave us empty. Our progress does not satisfy. Our prosperous land is not the promised land of our longing. Forgive our willful neglect of your word, our insensitivity to the needs of others, and our failures to feed the spirit that is within us. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. And know that through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are blessed to be a part of God's family and to know that the grace of God and the forgiveness of all of our sins can be ours. Let us be in a spirit of prayer, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. No, Luke, the evangelist, wrote of our risen Savior, who at the table with two disciples took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. So in company with all believers in every time and beyond time, we come to this table in our own homes, our own spaces, with our, with our own families to know the risen Christ and the breaking of the bread. Let us pray. Holy One, our loving creator, close to, us, uh, close to us as breathing and distant as the farthest star, we thank you for your constant love for all that you have made. We thank you for all that sustains life for all people of faith in every generation who have given themselves to your will, and especially for Jesus Christ, whom you have sent from your own being as our Savior. We praise you for, for Christ's birth, life, death, and resurrection, and for the calling forth of your church for its mission in the world. Gifted by the presence of your Holy Spirit, we offer ourselves to you as we unite ourselves together in these moments, knowing that even though we are communing at different times, we are together as one family of faith. Amen. Now we remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion and on the eve of death, Jesus gathered his disciples for the feast of Passover. And he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
and after supper he also took the cup and he said this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me let us pray come holy spirit come bless this bread and this fruit of the vine Bless us all in our eating and drinking at our tables, that our eyes may be opened and that we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in each other, and in all for whom Christ died. Amen. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. the cup of blessing which we bless of the communion of the blood of Christ. We are all watching this video at different times. We are all sitting at our own tables with our own items to be blessed. We are all sitting in our own places, our own holy spaces. But we are all sitting with God present with us. We are all sitting separately, but we are joined together in the grace and love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit being the body of Christ. So may you all know that even though we are apart, we are connected together. As I mentioned in my sermon, uh, if you would like to take a moment and think about who it is that you sit next to during worship and, and pray for a few of those people. You may pause this video and do that because it is important for us to continue to think about each other and pray for each other. You may do so now. As we sit together with some of our family and our little helpers, let us partake of communion together. Come, for all things are now ready. For as much as we are scattered and distant, God gathers us together in this moment as the body of Christ through the Holy Spirit Take and eat. And drink this, for as much as the winds gather together all that is necessary to grow the vine, so the Holy Spirit gathers us together in this moment to share the cup. This is the blood of Christ that is poured out for you. Take and drink. And let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Go in peace serving God as best as we can during this time. God bless you.